push record again. No, it says stopping. I think I have an old uh, lecture for last week I can post. Are, are there any questions at this point? No. Okay. No, it's a long evening. So uh, we just have one more lecture. We're going to talk about immunological disorders next week. And, and that'll be April 27th. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, May the 4th will be exam four. That'll be chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16. And then our final is May 11th. It's comprehensive, but the uh, department's putting some um, learning objectives in there, and I have to wait till I get those questions. Um, Okay, so anybody else have any uh, questions? Yeah, um, Professor, good evening, yes. sir. Um, this is Comfort. I noticed um, my, role, um, my role call was graded, and I don't think I've ever missed, it, missed any class. So I, I noticed I was graded, and I need to let you know that I've never missed a class. Okay, the um, attendance... I set it up, you're, you're not graded on attendance. I am required to record attendance. I, I don't know why it's generating grades. And well, it I, did on mine because it, it kind of brought my grade lower than it was. It, well, when I calculate the final grade in this semester, what I do is I print out a report for everybody. And, and if the attendance is showing up, I subtract it out of that report. So you don't have to worry about that. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you so much. Um, you can always remind me. But, um, Hi, Professor. This is Lillian. I'm here. Yes. Yeah, I thought you were here. I want to mark you as present. Yeah, saw... I'm here. I do have to, re as I said before, I do have to record and enter the uh, attendance. Uh, I thought it was set up that it shouldn't be grading you, but if it is, at the end of the semester, I print out a report and I subtract out that part of the grade. So it won't not be part of your final grade. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, but I'm sorry, I don't know why it keeps popping up. Hi, Professor. Hey, Kelly, I uh, saw and I marked you up. Present. Hi. Hi. This is Lillian. I'm here. Oh, yeah, Lillian, yeah, I marked you as present. All right. Thank you, sir. Sure. Any Anybody else? Yeah, Ibrahim Bakayoko. Yes, I uh, I saw you and marked you as present. Okay, thank you. Sure. Hello, Professor. Yeah, me see on Pardon? Yeah, me see Evelyn on Um, let me just double check. Okay. Yes, I did mark you as present. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, no problem. I have a, a quick question. So in, in the anatomy class in, on our exam, we, uh, one of the questions was to um, kind of lay out the number of COVID vaccines. And there's 200 COVID vaccines that are in development and about 60, I think, in phase one to three research. Correct. <clears throat> Are other vaccines like that? Is that is that typical or is that kind of COVID special? I, I would say that's COVID special. Usually they just have a few vaccines get developed for a disease at a time. But since we knew this was going to be a pandemic and that the virus is highly contagious in multiple countries uh, using different technologies developed, vaccines. They have to go through different phases. They, they're initially tested just to make sure they're not toxic. And you each time 
you go up a phase, you test more people. Uh, you, you might start out testing the healthiest age group and then expand it to other age groups. And then usually you have a phase, um, um, I think it's phase three. So it, usually you have tens of thousands, like usually like around 30,000 people. And then they take all the data from that once those people have been vaccinated and look for side effects and, and other issues and how effective it is. And then that's when they make a recommendation um, that uh, they think it's safe. And then the FDA has to, uh, well, now it goes through an emergency authorization because we want to get it online. So then the FDA has to review it and and then they can authorize it. So and right now there seems to be four vaccines. Unfortunately, there is some concern with the Johnson & Johnson and the um, AstraZeneca about these rare blood clots, though it does seem to affect mostly women and mostly a younger age group. It seems to be roughly around one in a million and seems to involve some kind of uh, antibody reaction. These people are testing positive for antibodies to certain blood clotting factors. Mm. So hopefully they can make recommendations concerning that. Uh, but both vaccines seem to be pretty effective and it'd be a shame to scrape uh, to you know, not use them at all. Uh, though the uh, manufacturing facility here in Baltimore for Johnson & Johnson, they have not done a very good job. And I think they've now put the whole uh, process there at Emergent Biosystems that's on uh, Lombard Street near Hopkins Bayview. They've put them on hold. Um, they're really just uh, not good quality control in their process. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, there's there's still vaccines in development. They're still in different earlier phases and um, maybe some better vaccines will come out of it or the same. Moderna and, um, and Pfizer seems to be very effective. It's limited by, you have to get two doses. So people have to come back and get their second dose and um, it has to be stored at minus 80, though I forget one of the vaccines they determined it could be at a warmer temperature for short periods of time. It's a shame with the Johnson & Johnson because it's one shot and it can be uh, stored, I think, at, uh, in a refrigerator up to a year, so. Are there any other um, uh, questions? Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to end our session and I will see everybody next week. Okay, good night, Professor. Okay, good night. Good night.